The Visa Bulletin for May 2024 is out and in this video we're going to see what's going on with it. Hi, my name is Oscar and I'm a scientist, not a lawyer. In this channel I talk about green card categories like EB2AW or EB1A in which you can self-petition. That means that you don't need to have a job offer, a company is sponsoring you and you can even do this without a lawyer saving a lot of money. And that's what I talk about in this channel today, specifically about the visa bulletin for the upcoming month of May. The big summary, if you want to stop watching here, is that there's really no, no news. Uh, we expected this, not a lot of movements moving forward until the end of fiscal year. And we are confirming this with the first month since we know that no changes or few changes are expected. But still, I'm here to tell you the news. I'm here to analyze the visa bulletin with you. Stick to the end of the video if you want to see that analysis. So let's see what the, vi the visa bulletin brings. The first thing that I always tell you is how to find the visa bulletin on your own. Just type visa bulletin, open the first link. And that's a link that takes you to a, an official travel.state.gov. It's a, a website like this one where you have on the left side the current visa bulletin, in this case, April 2024. And then at some point in the month, um, today is, is the 9th, so sometimes the 9th, sometimes it's a few days before or after, you have the upcoming visa bulletin, which is May in this case. So I'm going to scroll down. I don't talk about family sponsor green cards in this channel, at least yet. And I move to employment-based preferences, and I stop in the first table, table A. And I do the same with the other uh, screen. So what I want to show you is quickly, I want to move from tab to tab so we can see what are the main changes uh, very, very easily. In this case, we'll see that really not much is happening. What is table A? I, I said that I would stop in table A first. There's table A and table B. Table A is the most important table is a table that talks about when you are expected to finish the overall process. So it doesn't matter if you are in the US or if you are abroad. This table A tells you if there is a visa number available for you. The US green card system is based on quotas. So there's, for employment-based green cards, 140,000 approximately green cards per year. And if the demand is more than that, there's not enough visa numbers for everyone. So the visa bulletin will tell you if there is one for you or not. I'm going to show you now how the table looks and how you can read it. So this is the table A for April. Table A is called final action dates. And here on the left side, we have a column that says first, second, third. This is EB1, EB2, EB3. So EB1A is the first row. EB2AW is the second row. And then we have columns for country. We have one general column for all countries, except those listed in here, China, India, Mexico, and Philippines. So for EB1 in April, we had a letter C. That means current. Current is the best situation. It means that there is no backlog. There is no waiting line of people. So remember the quotas. That means that there is not enough demand to meet that quota. So you can file an adjustment of status immediately, or if you are abroad, you will do consular processing as soon as your I-140 is approved. So in April, we had a C for EB1 for most countries, and in May, we continue having a C for most countries. Then for China and India, we had September 2022 and March 2021 for China and India, respectively, and we see no changes in the month of May. So like I promised, not a lot going on from April to May 2024. Now, let's see what happens with EB2, of which EB2NAW is a part of. So we had a date of 15th of January of 2023 for most countries, and we have the same date in May. For China, we had February 2020, and it's the same date in May. And in April, we had a date of April 2012 for India for EB2, and we have the same date for India for EB2 in May. So again, no changes. It's a boring, boring visa bulletin. 
In fact, I don't usually talk about EB3. It's uh, also the same dates in, in both visa bulletins. And there's only a few changes uh, later in the table. So this is how you read tables. Um, this is table A. Again, it's the most important table because it really dictates when you can finish the process, no matter if you're abroad or in the US. But if you're doing adjustment of status, some months you are asked to look at table B to know if you can file adjustment of status. Not finish, file adjustment of status. But some other months you are required to look table A. So how do you know which table you have to use? You can go down to table B and there is a link here that will open a website from USCIS. You'll get a warning about that. And here you will be able to see what table you can you have to use for employment-based preferences. In the month of April, they told you to use table A, final action dates, to know if you can file an adjustment of status. Now, for the upcoming month of May, we still don't have that information, but typically towards the end of the fiscal year, which is where we are right now, we expect that we will have to use table A until the end of fiscal year. <clears throat> Remember that the end of fiscal year is in September. September is the last month of the fiscal year. So we are going to assume that once again, we are going to have to use table A and not B for adjustment of status. But for the sake of taking a look at the visa bulletin, let's take a look at table E. So we position ourselves here in both months. And now we can go we can go back and forth and you see that for EB1 we had a C for most countries we also have a C in May for EB2 in May we have 15 February 2023 it's exactly the same date that uh, we used to have so again no change whatsoever and if you remember my previous video for the visa bulletin of April I already said that the footnotes in the visa bulletin warned us about that. And we can take a quick look again so you can see what I'm talking about. At the time, the visa bulletin said that for employment-based categories, we expected no to little forward movement in the coming months. And, and that started now in May. And they uh, really project that, you know, that will happen in this quarter, in the next quarter, until we get to September. And then in October, hopefully, I hope that the um, days will start moving again because in October we start the new fiscal year, fiscal year 2025. And that quota system that I was referring to will refresh. We will get new employment-based visa numbers and dates will will move forward and more people will be able to adjust status, more people will be able to proceed to consular processing. If you want to see what is my expectation for the coming months, I invite you to check out my video that I have on the visa bulletin for the rest of the year. One thing that I show in that video is this Excel graph that I'm going to show you now, which is just a mental exercise we can do if we were to follow what the April Visa Bulletin told us to, to follow. Uh, this is a graph that I have built over the previous months that really talks about the months to being current based on the Visa Bulletin. And, and this is based on table A. And we had been seeing how backlogs were increasing. So the number of months to get current went up. That is not good. Then after May 2023, we had a stable situation fluctuating, you know, a few months up and down. And um, we see how now after April 2024, if we were to assume no changes in the visa bulletin, the time to get current would go up. And that's exactly what we saw now in May. We are now over here. So if we continue to see no changes, we will get to close to 20 months of wait time when the new fiscal year kicks in and hopefully it will go back down. I, I do hope so, but, but of course I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if that will happen 100% or not. We will have to wait and see what's going on, going on with each visa bulletin. And even if we have some months like this one where the visa bulletin is not really fun, is, is, is boring, um, you know, I, I, I'll be here to, to report it. Remember that no movement in the visa bulletin 
is not good. This is quite obvious, but I need to remind you. If uh, a month has passed from April to May and the visa bulletin doesn't advance at least one month, you know, things are getting effectively delayed. More people are getting I-140s approved, more people are getting green card processes started, but people are not really um, completing the process at higher rates. And that means that people are starting to accumulate in the system. So that's not good. I hope again that, you know, after a few months, things will start moving. So if you want to know how to put together your green card process, I do invite you to check out my online resources, my websites, ev1greencard.info for ev1a and ev2naw.info for ev2naw. I have a lot of posts, a lot of publications you can take a look at, including a compilation of my YouTube videos. And out of all those resources I offer, I am especially proud of my online courses. Here I'm showing you the ev2naw course curriculum. I have 10 modules, each one with many lectures in video, in text, in English, and in Spanish. And I will guide you through the requirements, how to fulfill the requirements, how to put together the critical documents of your uh, petition so you can succeed at EB2NIW with a low cost. I have a lot of good reviews. You can check them out. They are verified reviews, verified uh, buyers. And you can interact with me by submitting your questions in each lesson and also now we have monthly live sessions for EB2NAW where you can meet me, you can ask your question and we can get to know each other a little bit, which I always, always appreciate. So even though this is not the best news I um, was hoping to give you, or well, not really hope because I expected this, but I wanted to give you, I am happy to be here once again, and I will see you in the upcoming weeks with more content that will bring value to you. I hope you will join my course. I will hope to see you there. Until then, good luck in your EB2NAW or EB1A green card journey. See you soon.